Good afternoon, everyone. Ice Age now, Arctic Ocean almost totally covered in ice. Sea ice temperatures, wherever you see green, that's below freezing. Also, Greenland ice mass budget, where the circle is, blue line, that's this year. Eclipsing, not melting. Jumping down to Australia, coldest day in 25 years. Who would have thought of that with global warming? Dr. Wahid Udin. Sea levels aren't rising, at least in Bangladesh, 1984 to 2016, two tenths of 1% change. And I couldn't make this up if I tried. Carbon dioxide shortage in Europe because of the World Cup. They can't get the beer now. They're rationing cider and beer. This makes national headlines, but our total grains across the planet have just declined. We're about to lose 40 million tons of grain, and this is not even touching the headlines. And these types of issues, I'm going to be talking with Ben Shields from the Right Media on Freedom Slips Radio Studio A, 10 p.m. to midnight. How the media is definitely trying to mask your food price rises and the intensification of the grand solar minimum. But during this time, you will need to grow some of your own food. Microgreens are the fastest way to learn how to sprout something. You can take those sprouts, plant them outside, or you can eat them while they're fresh. Amaranth, incredibly nutritious. Sunflower, incredibly easy to learn how to grow. All the links for tonight's video as well as the Adapt 2030 TrueLeafMarket.com link are in the description box below. And as you have or may not have heard, we are entering into the new Eddy Grand Solar Minimum. This is an overlay of average sunspot numbers with a Dalton Minimum. That's in the blue compared to where we are now in the red. And we're actually below that activity. And keep in mind, there's a delay of the onset of the cold. It's not an instant change. It's going to take a couple more years. It's about a three to three and a half year lag behind what you're seeing here before the cold really intensifies. So we're going to start to look for some signs. I'm taking you over here to IceAgeNow.info. Arctic Ocean almost totally covered in ice. Great maps here. Let's wide that out for you. Uh, those of you in the States, four meters where the red is, that's 12 feet thick ice still. Let that sink in for a moment. And Robert did a good job here breaking down the sea ice thickness. Purple, uh, that's about 20 inches, maybe more thick. That blue green, that's the predominant color up there, eh, five to 10 feet thick. Yellow and orange thick are up to 12 feet thick. The red, looking at 13 feet thick ice still up there. That is not melting anytime soon. I'm gonna jump you over to Polar Portal here. Also, this is where the original graph came from for the sea ice thickness in the volume. You can check out DMI, and there's quite a few other meteorological sites out there covering it. And what I do like is that they have this sea ice temperature to accompany the chart. Now again, when we're talking about numbers, anywhere that you see that light green is below zero, up to 10 degrees Celsius below zero. So it's still in the mid twenties in the water as well as the sea ice temperature. So that's not melting anytime soon. So all these fanciful stories from the mainstream media, which is rather quiet these days because all the ice that's still up there, you haven't heard from them in a long time about the sea ice now, have you? Now also linked within polar portal here, we can take a look at SAF. Now you see that white patch right in the center there, completely white. That's 100% coverage still. When you get out into those grays, that's different gradients of the thicknesses that can then be matched up with what the thickness of the ice was in the colored graph previously. Good way to cross-reference all the information. As again, I've linked everything below in the description box so you can visit IceAgeNow.info and Polar Portal. Jumping over to take a look at Tony Heller. Arctic sea ice volume at least at a 13 year high. Now see, this is what I don't understand is why is this not in the media? We've been spending trillions of dollars to try to limit CO2 to stop the melting. Obviously it stopped, something very anomalous is happening this year. This should be plastered across all the news media globally. Seems that the sea ice melting has reversed trend. That should be applauded. That should be everywhere. This should be front page news, but it's not because it doesn't fit the global warming agenda, which is pretty much set up to institute a global tax, regulate what you could consume and regulate where you could live and regulate the amount of energy you could use. Purely and simply, it was a restraint mechanism for the human race, not science. 
Let's take a look at temperatures in the Arctic Circle. This is 80 degrees north latitude up to exactly 90 at the North Pole. That green line that you see, that's the bell curve out there. That's the 1958 to 2002 baseline average. That red line that's below the average, that's today's temperatures. Below average across the Arctic Circle. And if we take a look at Greenland to see if there's any types of matching, if it's below normal and it's icy everywhere, there should be other signs on Greenland as well. So let's look at that circle right there. That's this year's ice gain. Yeah, try to explain that one away. Not going to work. So this is all based on sea level rise. That was the whole spook factor that, you know, Greenland was going to melt. But now it's gaining ice. I mean, that's an enormous amount of gain. That's billions of tons. So I'll take you over here to Dr. Wahid Uddin. Uh, sea level changes would be most pronounced in places like Bangladesh that are so low coastal that even inches would register and show massive changes, right? Delta area. But his research shows from 1984 to 2016 during the entire global warming scare of, oh, the oceans are rising because everything's melting. Uh, not even 1% comparatively to the sea level change. Actually, two-tenths of 1%. So I guess the sea level changes aren't panning out either. We're gaining ice. Now, what else could possibly be wrong with all the uh, James Hansen and Dr. Wadham's predictions of ice-free Arctic by 2007? Oh, push it back. 2013? Oh, push it back. 2017? Push it back. Oh, we have until 2050 now. Hey, dudes, what changed? You're going to lose your funding if you say it's going to cool? Bringing you down here Australia as well. Bobby running the OzPolitik board down here as moderator. Coldest June day in 25 years. Now, who would have thought with all the global warming? Oh, yeah, a few others who are forecasting solar cycles based on sunspots on how it drives our climate have thought that it's going to get really cold, possibly all-time record cold in Australia this year or next. And here they are, 25-year cold. Well, it was 47-year cold just a few days ago. So I guess it's warming up. Oh, it's warming now here's something, I couldn't make this up even if I tried. This is the most bizarre story. Europe's carbon dioxide shortage, drink industry concerns as CO2 runs low. This monster trace gas has been so regulated that factories have been shuttered. It is such a streamlined process to get CO2 now. There's very few major distributors as there were back in, let's say, even the year 2000 or 2002. Uh, because of the obscene regulations, the new protocols that are being put in, they had to let inspectors come in and they had to shutter the factories for a little while. And during the World Cup, they're running out of beer. No kidding. CO2 shortage leads to beer rationing in the UK. And also, it's hitting the meat production industries as well. I didn't know that they used that much CO2 in uh, pork production. Apparently, they do. But here it is. Beer rationing begins after carbon dioxide crisis hits Europe. Tesco Lotus is now rationing bars, restaurants, and traders, restricting customers, get this, to 10 cases of beer and 5 cases of cider or soft drinks. And I thought there was nothing to worry about in our whole just-in-time delivery food distribution network across the planet. But what's really ironic is the USDA came out with the World Agricultural Supply Demand Estimates in 2017 and 18 is down 10 million tons, but then their projection 2018-19 drops that down to 522 million tons. That's 40 million less tons that they're predicting in the carryover stocks. The grand solar minimum is gonna hit with a vengeance. It's already starting to wipe out crops across the planet. There's so many losses this year mounting up. Media's in overdrive to try to mask it all. They're even using lexicon like white rain now to describe record snow. They're telling the meteorologist, or they've been trained through the IPCC's training program on how meteorologists can explain global warming to the regular minion populace to use white rain instead of using summer snow. And here we are, down 40 million tons coming up next year. Now what happens when it rolls over and it drops down to, I don't know, another 40, and then another 40, and then another 40, and we are at break even or even less? This should be the news, not about the World Cup draining too much beer. This should be the front page news. You see how just diametrically opposite it is for the news to report on what they're reporting on? This is exactly what Ben and I are going to talk about tomorrow in many Ice Age conversations on Studio A, RevolutionRadioFreedomSlips.com. Hope to see you there, and thanks as always for watching the video.